Welcome back everybody to another episode of Helpful Home Tips with Kyle. Today's video is about electrical components in a home and what types of electrical concerns you can gently make your clients aware of before the inspector even gets to the house. It'll minimize the unpleasant surprises and put your clients at ease. Most of the time, a home inspector will pick out common problems on an electrical panel like double taps, improper fusing, improper, improper neutral and ground bonding, open knockouts, and all that stuff that's really easy to solve. Knob and tube wiring is also not a concern, so if you see that, don't worry about it. Having said that, I should note that having knob and tube wiring in your house does increase your insurance costs, so remove it if you don't want that. Anyway, sometimes you run into a house with something like this. This is a defective panel. I'm gonna show you why. Well, I guess I'll talk about something that's actually kind of cool and kind of good about this panel. It's actually designed like a square D panel. Square D panels have not been recalled, and the cool thing about those is that you can put two wires into one breaker. With this, you can do the same thing with because the uh, screw holes are actually, the uh, clamps I should say, they are uh, designed to take two wires without the two wires being uh, coupled together and with their expansion and contraction loosening the screw. That doesn't happen with this panel, so that's a good thing. Now, something that's not so great is that the indicators, those little tiny white things that turn black when the circuit is deactivated, sometimes turn black when the circuit is actually still activated. It does not indicate properly, at times, whether or not the circuit is active or not. And because they're really small, it's just not setting you up for an easy time keeping yourself safe. So that's not so great. Uh, another thing, uh, this technically is not correct anymore, um, because this panel is actually technically being used as a sub-panel. The main panel is outside in the garage and is feeding this panel, therefore, the uh, white wires here and the copper wires, uh, they should be put on separate bus bars away from each other because sub-panels are not allowed to have neutrals and grounds, those wires, bonded together, such as in this panel. So this panel has a few issues other than the fact that it's totally defective anyway. So uh, that's what we got going on here. So this panel I'm showing you here is another outdated type of overcurrent protection devices for your electrical system. When too much power is flowing through a circuit, there's a little metal filament inside the fuses that melts, and that disconnects the power. That's called thermal tripping. The Bulldog panel functions in a similar way by sensing too much heat in the overloaded circuit and cuts the power, but doesn't use a filament, so you don't have to replace the whole breaker. You just have to reset it. This protection method is somewhat slow. Modern panels use this method of protection as well as something much faster, electromagnetic tripping. Electromagnetic tripping occurs when there is a short circuit in the electrical system, and once the breaker senses a change in the electromagnetic energy going through the circuit and the breaker, the breaker will trip. This is an almost instantaneous function. Bulldog panels tend not to have that function built in, especially with the older ones, like the one featured in this video today. So they just aren't as great at doing their job. Now, a bit about GFCI outlets. You know that whole kill someone in the bathtub with the toaster thing? GFCI outlets are supposed to protect against that. They sense when power is being diverted to a different pathway, that being the water and the plumbing system, and through the ground wire attached to the plumbing system, instead of through the neutral wire where it should go. When this happens, the outlet senses the sudden diversion of electricity and cuts off the power. It's recommended that you exercise these outlets by pushing the test button and then the reset button every two months so that the internal components remain fresh and fully aware. With all of that said, do not rely on a GFCI outlet to protect you from short circuits while you are bathing. Make toast in your kitchen. Now for another maintenance tip for you. So you see this stuff right here? This is a sealant uh, that they use uh, commonly on uh, electrical systems too seal off water from the uh, internal components of the electrical system. Uh, this stuff eventually cracks and dries out. Once it starts cracking, replace it. So other panels that would be labeled defective like this one are manufactured by Zinsco and Federal Pacific. Same issues, they have been recalled and discontinued. Okay, so another correction. When I said same issues, what I really meant was that Federal Pacific panels and Zinsco panels have a history of failing to trip. Not good! Now, the funny thing is, this panel has been doing just fine since 1962 when the house was built. 
However, you'd think that the homeowners would have replaced it by now. I'll show you why. This house is actually kind of interesting because while they have an old panel that is defective completely, they have all new equipment other than that. So this is the new main shutoff manufactured by Square D. Yay! Uh, that's modern, that's good, that's all fine. It takes the main power through this thick wire and puts it into this box here, which is a switcher. This is for a generator. So when the power is not coming through the main service from that thick wire, it is actually coming through from this thin wire coming from the generator. That wire goes outside to where the generator is. Anyway, power for the house is coming through one of these wires. It goes through this switching device, and then it goes through this main wire again to the main panel, which is over here. So this is the new main panel for the house. They actually have it labeled here, so you can see they have pool sub panel, and they have garage, garage. So they're powering a panel for the pool and a garage separate from the house. Uh, lots of stuff going on here. Um, and yeah, this is the main panel for the house now, and it is feeding power for the house through a circuit that leads to the Bulldog Pushmatic panel that's defective. So you'd think that they'd, uh, you know, have a new panel uh, for the house that's being fed off of this new main panel, but they don't. And now, something else that your inspector will definitely have a bit of a concern about. Check this out. So Michael, what did we find in your house that deals with electricity that's weird? Well, we found this panel on the wall. Is it a closet? Is it a cabinet? No, it's an extra electrical panel. Thumbs up for that one, right? <laughs> so if you find a panel installed inside the wall like this, it's normally not so bad, but just as long as it's not exceeding the half inch to inch distance limit. This one is exceeding that distance limit by like six inches, so just tell your clients that your inspector is going to talk about this eventually. That way they may not want to walk away from the deal. So, when you're showing your clients a house, just try to be aware of these different concerns your inspector will eventually point out when the inspection occurs. So you can properly prepare your clients for those different surprises, and so then they won't be as surprised as much as they're still interested in the house, because that's what we always want. So thank you very much for watching another episode of Helpful Home Tips with Kyle. Like my Facebook page, National Property Inspections, New London County. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Be well and happy home searching. Thanks very much. This can't be love because I feel so well. No sobs, no sorrow.